have to now turn to Rani when it comes to inclusion. Uh, Rani, very different story there. We have just come to sort of uh, understand, get the vocabulary right, educate people, sensitize ourselves to inclusion in its true sense. Uh, when we talk about access to toilets, what is the dilemma there? How should we approach it from an LGBTQ plus lens? First of all, um, namaskar and hello to everybody here and to this esteemed panel. I would like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, first of all, ma'am, big fan. I, I told you that backstage, I'm a big fan of uh, Mithali ji. Uh, I can only understand because uh, what she said about toilets is uh, my reality every day. Uh, so now what happens is that, you know, when we leave, for example, if we are traveling, uh, I am privileged enough that I have been, I'm born and bred in Mumbai, Bandra. But what about my sisters who have to travel even longer and not in flights? Now, you, you know, even here, I see that, you know, of course, this is a platform that we are, uh, you know, has been set up so that we can I kind of uh, tell you what our issues are, right? Uh, I would really, really appreciate if somebody really takes notice. And um, on, in, at the airports, for example, or in the railway stations, there's always only a male and a female toilet or an option. We've proposed this many a times, and I hope that it's done, is an all-gender or a gender-neutral toilet, along with the men and male and female toilet. So that, you know, this whole conundrum where people are like, but it's not safe. If you don't feel safe, you still have the male and female option. Mm. But for somebody like me, you're... And the thing is that I'm very proud of my government, whether state or, or uh, you know, the center. Yeah. We are one of the only countries that have recognized transgender people on paper. Yes. But having said that, we have to also give in principle, in, in function of everyday, in our everyday lives, the respect. Because then I'm like, okay, I have this identity card that allows me to tick the transgender identity. Mm. But uh, having said that, when I see on the ground, the, the realities on the ground, they're very different. They're very different. Mm. So I am like, then I start questioning, do I exist? And if I exist, do I matter? Mm. These are very, very simple, very simple nuances of everyday life and which a man and a woman might take for granted that, you know, you want to, you want to go to use the restroom. You won't think twice. Yeah, we have to think about how we'll be looked at, how we'll be perceived and should we or should we not go only at all? That leads to physical issues, that leads to, you know, uh, uh, urinary tract infections, bad health, mental health is, is, is a privilege, I would say, for transgender people because we have to go through so much just when we step out of the house. So True. this is something that I think we need to, even on stage, I would have loved to see an all-gender toilet, uh, you know. There is an accessible, and I, I spoke to one of the... Um, I spoke to some uh, a policy maker and he was like, yeah, but you can use the all accessible toilet. Mm. Uh, and I was like, but you know, what about if somebody doesn't have a disability and I want to just use a toilet? How, why is it so difficult yeah. to create one more toilet? That's something to think about. Yeah, that's definitely something to think about. Milan Deora, do you have any thoughts on what can be done on this issue? Well, firstly, let me begin by congratulating Harpek and News 18 for uh, organizing this event. Uh, I'm grateful to you, Akshay, for your leadership in this area. And in the last half an hour, 45 minutes after witnessing these panel discussions, what I find extremely heartening is as someone who's been in politics now for 20 years, and by the way, no longer the youngest member of parliament. <laughs> Once upon a time, I may one of been. One of the youngest, yeah. I was one yeah. of the youngest at the time. But what I find very, very heartening is that on the eve of a general election mm. in the world's largest democracy, we are discussing toilets, water, and environment. Mm. And I think that's a very, very positive development in our country. It is. That these are issues, hopefully, that the young generation of India will elect leaders on. Um, I was listening to different people talk about the different challenges. I can tell you that as a politician, I think what ultimately determines the success of these initiatives is really will. And will certainly from the top, uh, the Prime Minister has certainly led from the front from day one. 
making toilets, making sanitation a political developmental mission is extremely unique in a developing country like ours. For the government of India to allocate close to 1 lakh crore rupees in the last decade to build toilets, I think is a huge feat in itself. But listening to the Sadhvi before on the earlier panel, I remember Akshay Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. He had a very powerful quote and he said, for a forest to be green, every tree must be green. Mm. And so the will ultimately comes from the people. Yeah. Um, if each and every one of us, like Sahar rightly pointed out, if each and every one of us brings about a change in our own life, and that change can be as simple as putting pressure on politicians mm. to make this an electoral issue, whether it's Rani's issue, whether it's another issue, mm. that on its own will set the agenda. So I've seen in my own experience, I was telling Akshay that from 2004, when I was the youngest MP in the country, I remember in a constituency like South Mumbai, which for those who don't know Mumbai and some of our friends who may come from outside Mumbai, they think of South Mumbai as, and it is certainly one of the most developed constituencies in the country. Mm. But I can tell you in posh areas like Malabar Hill, in posh areas like Kolaba, mm. you go down the road from a fancy area, you see slums, you see people living in chawls, and you have extremely poor sanitation and hygiene standards. And I remember using most of my, what they call member of parliament, local area developmental funds. Mm. It's called MPLADS. Yeah. Every member of parliament has that fund. Yeah. I remember using that to make toilets. And I was criticized by my opponents that, how can you, how can a member of parliament focus on toilets? Members of parliaments must also talk about larger issues like foreign policy, the economy. Mm. But my response was always that all politics is also local. Mm. And um, we set a parameter where we m made almost every slum and shanty in South Mumbai mm. uh, open defecation free back in 2014. Wow. We brought uh, areas where 40 or 50 people were sharing a toilet. There was no uh, division between genders forget about a third or a, uh, another gender. And we made sure that for an average of eight to 10 people, there was one toilet, which I'm not saying is perfect, but it was a huge improvement from what the situation was. Mm, true. So I think that these are positive developments. I really believe that when I see initiatives like this coming together, where the mm. private sector, where the media, where influencers, where policymakers um, come together, and set this agenda, especially at a crucial time on the eve of elections, yeah. when the elections have been announced, when one month from now, the people of India will vote, close to 600 or 700 million Indians, the largest festival of democracy in the world. Yeah. Um, if we can set this as an agenda, if we can take this to the people, if people, the people of India can demand that every political party mm. makes sanitation, makes open defecation, mm. makes upgrading our sanitation systems, an election issue, not a political issue, an electoral issue. Yeah. I think that's where India can then transition um, and leapfrog to another uh, realm altogether. True. In a city like Mumbai, for instance, I was talking to the mayor of Surat and the mayor of uh, Indore who've done extremely well. Um, in a city like Mumbai, we have a unique disadvantage, if you will, that most of our sanitation and sewage pipes, most of our water pipelines, especially in the island city, are built during the British era, are over 100 years old. Yeah. If we don't upgrade those pipelines, the sewage pipelines mix with water pipelines, and then you get cholera, dysentery. So there's a lot more to be done. Building toilets is certainly one aspect of it. Upgrading infrastructure, even in a city like Mumbai, where the municipality is one of the richest municipalities in Asia. Yeah. Even here, we need to upgrade that. But capacity. I like your point, Milin, that you've...